Molo, Brother Billy. Molo, Brother Andrew. See, Brother Billy, let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about something that's been haunting me for years. Mm -hmm. Now, don't take that lightly. It's been haunting me for years. Mm. Th let me show you. Me. Uh, right, uh, can you just hold this for just a second, Brother Billy? Uh, I got to take it right back for a second. I just got to get this out here. Right God, uh, I don't want you. I don't want you to hold it too long because, you know, it, it might affect you or something like that. But let me just show you something here from my thing. It's because I have to have the evidence. Mm -hmm. See, this is, this is my, a copy of, of my uh, uh, degree from, from Livingston College, part of Rutgers University. Now, so why, well, well, the reason why I do that is because this day and age, you better prove you got that degree. Because yes. you know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I got a degree, I got a Bachelor of Arts degree there, you know. Well, here's the interesting it was given to me uh, by Edward Blaustein, who was the president of the university. But in my college, had this guy, Emmanuel Mestany. Well, I don't talk about him because I don't like that guy. I never liked that guy, you know. Anyway, so what happened was, uh, was uh, uh, I always wondered. Well, how come? How come? Well, well, how come they dismantled my college? You know, Livingston College doesn't really exist anymore. It was part of the university system, but but uh, something happened, and and they sort of they didn't like us. They didn't like us students. They didn't like the kind of students we were. And Livingston College was a very unique college in New Jersey. It's about there, and 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 they. What they did was they took people actually off the streets. They went to pool halls and recruited folks. The mean age for the college was 25 years old. These were mostly, as you would say, that back then the inner city people, you know. And, uh, uh, uh. and so, so I was wondering, well, why did they get rid of the college? Because it was, it was really good. We had, we had some incredible teachers, A.B. Spellman, uh, uh, Tony Morrison was, was, was one of the teachers there. And we had a different relationship. I mean, one of my favorite teachers was Pepsi Charles, the late Pepsi Charles. Peace and blessings and so she, she, you know, I kissed her, you know, or I kissed her a lot, you know, because as student and teachers, we were very close together. I mean, I, no relationship, but you know, she had very soft lips. I liked Pepsi a lot, you know. I dug Evans, bunch of, bunch of, you know, just got back, I got an amazing, we had amazing uh, cross representative students, you know. We had all the radical students, I guess. This is in the 70s, was at that college campus. But they, I guess they just didn't like us all hanging out together. So they can't feel But it haunted me for years and years. Then I realized in just this day and age, now in the 2000s, you know, 2012s, whatever it is, 13s, 14s, whatever we are, I realized something. Here's what I realized. Let's look at my thing. There's a lot of, let's call folks that were of the, uh, that kind of milieu, you know, uh, like my kind of stripe. You got folks now advocating for like reparations, you know, people that teach in college and write these like bloggers, you know, do a lot of research. You got the sister Michelle Alexander, she wrote the thing, The New Jim Crow. She's an academic, she teaches, you know, in, in so associate professor of law at some university over in the States. You know, there's this guy that wrote about uh, 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 reparations, well, that was uh, to catch your coats about reparations, but there's another bro brother that's writing reparations about the legalization of marijuana. Kind of interesting because he says that any plan for legalization of marijuana should include or come with a plan for reparation for those communities that were damaged by the misguided, you know, uh, 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 a war on drugs, they used to call it. See, because right now, marijuana is becoming legal in the states, but the people who are making money off of that are not the people that were victimized, you see? So it's kind of interesting. Now, plus you have people like uh, Dr. Gerald Horn. Now, I used to, well, uh, I know Gerald Horn. Anyway, he writes things like the counter-revolution of uh, 1776, talking about slavery and stuff like that. But I'm trying to say, when you, when you do from, uh, blogging or when you do uh, uh, postdoctoral work, as they say, or postgraduate work, you do things of your interest. 
Now these people that were going to school and living us in college with me and whatnot, we had certain interests that other people didn't have. You were going to Yale, you didn't have the same kind of interest that we had, because we was coming from the streets, you see, coming from the war in Vietnam. So what I'm trying to say is that I see why they got rid of the college. Because if these folks kept on going, then it would be a different world right now because we would be informed, we would be writing papers and dissertations and whatever have you on our circumstance. And that would change this circumstance. Now with blogging, that's another thing, it changes the circumstance, changes what they call a conversation or what they call it the discourse. So now I understand, you had to get rid of those kind of people because we were thinking differently. And this world doesn't want you to pull well, this reality, doesn't want us thinking differently. You know, of course you might get some liberation. You're going to free some people's mind and start thinking differently. Anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a little bit too much. I'm, I'm, I'm talking like a long academic kind of, you know, thing. Well, that's what happens when you dispatch. Uh, 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 that's, that's me. I'm, I'm dispatching. Okay. This has been a dispatch from, from the arch director of Meadows. So that would be me, uh, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <clears throat>